Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. We're in the office today because we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have hit our shelves in the past week. Let's check them out. All right, we're starting things off with a new release from Wingman EDC. This is the Spark, or the Spar-K, which is designed by Jonas Iglesias. These start at about 350 for the standard titanium version and come up to about 395 on this particular version here, which features a copper inlay. That copper actually comes out of the box already starting to develop a patina, so you're not going to have to, uh, you're not going to have that sort of break in period where the, the copper turns from shiny as it starts to darken up a little bit. It already has that kind of classic worn in look ready to go as soon as you pull it out. Blade Steel's M390, we've got a nice hollow grind here with a satin finish, keeps the edge really nice and thin, and the length is under three inches too, or about uh, two and five eighths about. So nice, very compact size, you're gonna be able to carry it all kinds of different places. It's not gonna look super aggressive, even though you do have that Tonto profile, uh, which kind of, you know, goes against that a little bit, but it's nice and small nonetheless. The titanium handles may look like an integral, but they are a two-piece design. You can just barely make out the seam there. Uh, this is not a separate backspacer. It's just the two pieces that are mated together. It also gets this nice hidden lanyard attachment point here at the back, as well as a right-hand tip-up pocket clip. Nice and subtle piece. It's not deep carry. It is a milled pocket clip, but it is very kind of restrained. It's, it's size appropriate for the knife, and it looks really good. Now, the key feature with this knife, though, it is a flipper, but it features their kickstop mechanism, which is essentially a two-stage flipper, a two-piece flipper design. The flipper tab itself is separate from the blade. And as you rotate it open, or sorry, as you flip it open, it launches the blade, but that flipper tab, you can see, it's still hanging out there, right there at the spine. Gives you a clean look when open. You don't have the flipper tab sticking out. And watch what happens as I disengage the frame lock. You can see just there at the end, it starts to push that out and then it operates just like a normal flipper. Kind of a neat little thing. As I said, there are two versions. You've got the plain titanium and the one with the copper inlay. Uh, I really like the contouring on the handle. It's not just a flat slab. It helps it nestle into the hand just a little bit better. Even though it is just a three finger knife, you do get a pretty good hold on it. As far as extras, you do get a nice little stonewashed dog tag with some model information on the front and some graphics there on the back. And you also get a custom pivot tool for adjusting this here pivot. Sits in there, you've got three little pieces, but you get kind of that, uh, I don't know, it looks like a little bomb or something there, but pretty cool. Nice little addition to that. So that's a cool piece and they are fresh out, so make sure to jump on those if you're interested. First of many flippers that we've got this week. We've uh, been kind of flipper light, I feel like, uh, a, f a few weeks running now, so it's cool to see um, kind of the resurgence of some flippers this particular week. If you want to spend a little bit less money on your flipper, we've got a new model from ProTech. This is a new manual model. It's not an automatic from ProTech. Of course, very well known for their autos, but this is the Malibu. It comes in about 190 and it is a button lock flipper. It has that look of a ProTech right away, kind of has their similar construction and you have that button there. It just doesn't uh, push to fire the blade open. It is a flipper. And they've tuned the action really nice. Sometimes uh, button lock flippers can feel um, a little mushy sometimes. They're not always as crisp, but they've done a really good job of keeping the detent and the action on this very nice. The blade steel is 20 CV, uh, just over three and a quarter inches long. You've got that really acute uh, modified Warncliffe profile, but it's a really great shape for any manner of everyday heavy utility needs or even less less than heavy utility needs. But you've got that really nice fine point uh, for scoring, any kind of draw cuts are, are situated very well with this blade, breaking down cardboard, opening boxes, that sort of thing. And because you've got a high flat grind with a bit of full spine thickness here at the back, and we're a decent thickness, maybe 330 seconds, just eyeballing it, balling it there, you've got enough rigidity behind the spine that you can really push this through some heavier material, even though it's not a you know, it doesn't feel like an overbuilt knife. It feels like a very carryable design. The handles right now are black aluminum. You've got that nice deep carry pocket clip on the right side. Nice little hidden lanyard attachment point again. Just a really nice knife. Really cool design from ProTech. And I'm glad to see them uh, branching out from the automatics because some of us out there, 
We can't really carry an auto day to day, but I could definitely carry this. All right, next up is another flipper, but there's something a little special about this one. This is a new Knife Center exclusive, and that's not exactly what makes it special. Uh, this is a new version of the Arkeo from Artisan Cutlery. This is a Knife Center exclusive detent lock flipper with these black and orange G10 handles. They had prototypes of this, uh, of this design overall at SHOT Show earlier this year, and I was really impressed by it because it's a flipper, but it doesn't lock, but it's still fidgety. Let me show you what I mean. So in a way, this knife is kind of like a friction folder since you've got two detent balls, one on each side of the handle that hold the blade open. Doesn't take a ton of pressure to, to kind of close it, but this is what's nice about that with this particular design. They've tuned it so you can flip it open and then flip it closed. It's really addictive, I gotta say. And because even though it doesn't take too much pressure to, to kind of disengage uh, the blade from being held open, because you've got that nice flipper tab there, it's not gonna close on you if you, if you were to disengage those detents. But speaking of that blade, it's a VG10 Damascus, so it looks good, and you've still got some pretty good performance to go behind it. And the length is under three inches. So again, great length, just like that wingman, great length for taking just about anywhere especially if you live in certain uh, knife, uh, knife restrictive locales that may have a blade length limit. A lot of times three inches is good enough and it's non-locking on top of that. So you're not gonna have to worry about um, the lock engaging automatically so that you have to worry about even more restrictions, especially for some folks overseas that have uh, restrictions against those sorts of things. But in addition to that, you've got a lanyard attached with a nice metal pin here on the end. You notice there's a hole here on the backside Take just a minute, you can pop that in there, and now you've got a stop pin that's gonna keep that blade from closing at all. So you still have locking functionality, just you have to engage it manually. You have to pull that out and pop it in there. It's a pretty cool way to get around some of those restrictions out there. And I'm not a, the hugest fan of this double detent system on a lot of designs, but a lot of the shortcomings that I see in it are really solved by the way they've done this particular knife. You can also use that pin when the knife is closed as well, so it's not gonna accidentally open in your pocket or in a bag or anything like that. But for my money, this is probably the first double detent knife out there that I would personally buy. And the best news is the prices on these are actually very good. Even with the upgraded Damascus blade, these start at $99.99, so just under 100 bucks. I really think that's a very good deal on a very capable and unique little knife. Got another Knife Center exclusive to show you right now, again, with some black and orange G10. These are new uh, Knife Center exclusive Triway XM18s from Rick Hinderer. This is the 3.5. We got a 20 CV blade with the working finish, which is sort of a heavy oxidized stonewash finish. And you've got that robust Sponto blade profile that is gonna get you through some really tough obstacles for sure. But you know, what else is there to say? It's an XM18, it's just a classic design. You've got that titanium frame lock on the back, the nice lock bar stabilizer there, which is sort of a Rick Hinderer signature element. Really solid action thanks to that triway pivot that comes with the, uh, the ball bearings installed right out of the box. Tip up or tip down pocket clip, really cool black and orange texture on the front. Nice design, a little bit of a finger, finger choil there for choking up. It's really cool, 425 on this new exclusive right here. Next up, we've got some more black and orange. This one's not a Knife Center exclusive though, and it's not a Hinderer design, even though Hinderer does a lot of stuff for ZT. This is the Ken Onion designed ZT350. New from ZT in that we can now, or it now comes with the VZ grip scale installed on the front side of this knife. There's four versions available. Uh, you've got two different handle colors and each are available with the, the two different blade finishes. You've got your choice of the black DLC blade, S30V, uh, just like the original, as well as the Tiger Stripe, signature ZT Tiger Stripe finish. And then in terms of the handles, you can get either blade with either the black and orange G10 or the Predator green and black G10 I've got here at the bottom. Prices on these are about uh, just under 210 for the black DLC versions going up to about 222, uh, just over for the Tiger Stripe versions. Apart from that, it's the ZT350. It's a classic for a reason. On the back side, you've got the standard flat black G10 scale, and they actually include the front G10 scale, uh, the front black scale in the package if you happen to want to swap that out later. 
but the, the VZ grip scale on the front has a little bit of contouring. It's not flat like the original. And as you can see here, there's definitely some uh, more aggressive milling going on here. So you've got a really solid hold overall. You've still got the pocket clip screws on the front as well. So you've got four positions for that pocket clip. You've got that nice broad S30V blade, about three and a quarter inches, but it's nice and fat. So you really feel like you could tackle some heavy work. Speed safe assisted opening for speed on the opening with the flipper. What more do you want to know? Again, this is another classic design, just like that hinderer. Now just spiced up a little more with these really cool handles. All right, I've got another spiced up model here. This one is from Medford Knives. This is a new version of their Slim Midi Marauder. Now I've seen this before with the drop point blade, but this is actually the first time I've seen one of these knives with the Tonto profile. Price comes in $585, and for that you get American-made construction. Uh, in fact, the last, uh, last several knives have been American-made, uh, most of what we've looked at so far up front, which is really nice. Blade steel itself is S35VN, about 3.5 inches, or just over 3.5 inches. If that's uh, an important metric to you, just keep in mind it is just over. You can see we've got a nice hollow ground section here at the bottom, or the, uh, the main part of the edge, and flat ground there at the tip. Nice chamfered edges on the steel. And unlike a lot of Medfords, when I turn it on the back, you can see this is a very slim design, hence slim midi marauder. The blade is thinner, so you can cut a little bit better. And the handle itself is a little thinner as well, so it's gonna pocket a little bit more easily than some of the kind of the overbuilt monsters that Greg is known for. I mean that in a good way, don't get me wrong. Just for me personally, I do like the, uh, this nice slimmer construction right here. But it still feels extremely solid. Got that stonewashed titanium look here with a little hint of a brow, kind of a brass uh, coloration to it. Nice strong frame lock. And it's a little bit more of a deliberate opener. This is not a flipper or even a thumb stud opener for that matter. Instead, you're gonna use this fuller. You start with your thumb here at the front and slide it towards the back as you rotate the blade around. Still opens very easily once you get the hang of it. The Slim Midi Marauder actually probably is my favorite uh, Medford design out there. So it's cool to see the new, uh, the new blade shape available right here. But we've got some other new Medfords as well, and we'll make sure to leave links to, uh, to all of those down there in the description. All right, next up is a couple of hardworking fixed blades. Now that we've looked at a few uh, hardworking folders, we've got a new uh, limited edition. This is the Reserve Edition of the Topps Baja 4.5. Same price as the original though, comes in about 135. Another great USA made knife with a cool new variant on offer now. That blade steel is 1095, and as the 4.5 would suggest, you've got about four and a half inches of, uh, of sharpened edge there. Uh, about 4.8 inches overall, uh, more or less tip to scale. Those scales are canvas micarta. You've got a nice little white liner there on the inside, which looks really good against that black powder coating, which is gonna keep that 1095 from rusting too badly on you. Those handles are bolt-on. You've got a few diagonal milled lines here. And on each side, you've actually got a, uh, the bow drill divot on both, uh, both sides for you there. So you can use it with either hand to use as your bearing block when you're doing a, uh, a friction fire. Just make sure you've got it in the sheath when you're doing that. It's got a nice leather sheath here uh, on this one as opposed to some of the, uh, the more Kydex-like options. So you can, but you can still use that to hold the blade safely while you bear down on the, uh, on the bow drill. But in addition to that, you've also got a Topps fire starter here. Nice, thick, uh, big piece of ferrocerium right there, as well as their survival whistle, which comes in pretty much all their stuff nowadays. Maybe not all, but a good portion of it anyway. It's a nice little add-on for you there. As far as belt carry, this is a dangler situation only. We don't have a belt loop here uh, on the lower part of the sheath. You just have this uh, snap actuated dangler here but that's gonna help it keep, a, keep it a little bit lower. If you're wearing a long coat, it'll be easier to access, or maybe a, a pack with a hip belt, a nice dangler is always appreciated. But back to the blade itself, I think overall this is a very good size for one of those uh, survival knives that you could have with you all the time. It's not gonna be so big and heavy that you don't wanna carry it with you. Uh, thickness on the blade, about 0.16, uh, and then with that, uh, four and a half ish inch length, you're gonna be able to control it very easily. You have enough strength at the spine, given that steel and that thickness, you're gonna be able to beat on it, uh, do a little bit of light batoning, uh, any of those heavier jobs, but you've still got a almost full flat grind so that you can still slice pretty well at the same time. If you wanna slice even better, you could always strip that, uh, that traction coating as well. Another new fixed blade, another new outdoor knife. 
uh, and even more affordable. We've got the new Old Hickory Fish and Small Game Knife coming in at about 33 bucks right now. Now, even though they don't call it that in the name, this is their take on the Kephart knife as seen through the Old Hickory range. Got about a four inch blade with that uh, distinctive spear point shape, nice full flat grind, carbon steel. It's on the thinner side, so you're gonna be able to slice very well given the geometry. You've still got a good bit of toughness though as well thanks to that carbon construction. Handles are the typical hardwood with the uh, cutlery rivets holding it on on each side. And included in that price is a very capable little sheath. Nothing uh, out of this world spectacular, but it is very service serviceable. It's stitched together very nicely. Got a belt loop there on the back. Really good American made package on a budget. Uh, a lot of times you're gonna have a hard time finding things in this price range made in America that are actually worth it. This one definitely is. And then again, just like every other uh, old hickory out there, it still makes a great platform for doing your modifications to it. You can knock those handles off, put some custom scales on there, uh, go full out, make another custom sheath if you wanna get fancier there. The blade is just about perfect. You could certainly modify it further, but nice four inch spear point with a flat grind. Man, it's gonna get everything done you need to get done when you head outdoors, that's for sure. All right, next up, I've actually got one I think that's been pretty high, highly anticipated. It's a new version of the Gerber flat iron. And in my opinion, this is the way the flat iron probably should have been from the very beginning. Got a few upgrades over that original that definitely make it worth it coming in at 50 bucks right now. First, the blade steel is seen an upgrade. We've got D2 tool steel, about 3.6 inches. So you've got a lot better edge retention than the base models of this knife. Nice hollow grind, keep things thin enough there at the edge to cut pretty well, and a good size choil there to choke up and get, more, you know, get that finer control over the edge. The finish also looks really nice. We've got a, uh, an almost mirror polished blade, which really sets off this micarta handle. And this is a blue micarta, almost looks like a, a, a denim type of coloration. Looks fantastic. I'm a big fan of, of denim micarta, but you don't see it often enough. So this is really cool. This is a stainless steel frame lock on the back, and you've got a little bit of a, uh, a blackened finish or a, a, a graphite-like finish there on the back. Now here's where you see kind of some of the improvements over the original version. Uh, the old versions used to have a, uh, just a stabilizing disc here. Well, they've swapped that out for a bigger stabilization plate and does a couple of things. For one, you still get the, the usage as an over-travel arrester, but also when you're going to open the knife, your fingers are gonna naturally rest there uh, and you would do this on the old knife as well and you would actually hit the uh, squeeze the lock bar if you weren't being careful. Well, thanks to that new plate, you're not gonna squeeze that lock bar when you go to open it. So it's gonna open a lot more easily uh, without you having to try hard at all. They've also made the, uh, that blade cut out a little bit larger and a little bit further away from the pivot also to make it easier to open than the, uh, the first runs of the original flat iron. But there you go, new and improved, and we've got them in stock right now. We've had a, some old Hickory and some Gerber, some really classic companies. How about another one? Classic American pocket knife maker, Case Knives. And we've got a few new additions to their uh, Star Spangled Natural Bone series. Now there are several versions of this knife or several different patterns available uh, already, but the new ones this particular week, we've got the uh, mini copper lock as well as this two blade gun stock model right here. These are cases stainless steel blades, and you can see we've got USA engraved there, and really cool treatment to this bone. It's sort of been engraved and then filled in with some color to create the American flag motif right here. Uh, if I didn't know any better, I'd say it might even be laser engraved. I'm not quite sure exactly how, they, uh, how they're how they doing the process, but it looks really cool. You've got smooth white bone on the back, but especially with the, uh, the gun stock pattern with the American flag on the front, looks pretty cool to me. Now they definitely intend this to be one of their more collectible versions, uh, collectible patterns. This one comes in just under a hundred, but again, the prices range, uh, they will range around a little bit depending on which one you get in the whole Star Spangled series. All right, let's take a look at some of the finer things in lives, in lives, finer things in life now. We've got some new options from, uh, from Red Horse Knives. We've got, we've actually got their Hellraiser P knife in stock, but what I've got right here is their Condor Cigar Cutter. Now, this is a premium cigar cutter. This is not some gas station thing or a convenience store thing that will uh, little snip the ends of your stogies there. We've actually got an M390 blade here. 
and really nice fit and finish. Consequently, these are quite expensive. This one starts at 265 and the prices do go up depending on which handle options you get. But you've got that M390 steel and the pivot action on it is just extremely smooth. You don't feel a lot of play at all. Uh, it's not loose in a bad way. It's just silky smooth. It's very nice. You can see you've got the Red Horse logo there on the front, Condor on the back. Again, that's the name uh, of, the, of the particular model. This is not like a, you know, a Condor knife and tool thing. But we've got blue G10 on this particular one, but there's black G10, there's carbon fiber options, as well as black options for the metal as opposed to the, uh, the satin look right here. But in addition to being the cigar cutter, it also functions as a self-defense tool, as you can see. So there's a little bit more utility beyond just the, uh, the smoking, uh, smoking accessory right there. So if you are worried about that, you've got a little bit more, more on you right there. If you want a fancy knife to go with your cigar cutter, might I suggest this? We've got a new uh, artisan cutlery design. This is called the Centauri. This is actually a Ray Laconico design, and it's one of the few designers, or it's one of the few like really marquee, huge name designers that uh, artisan cutlery is working with so far. I'm glad to see him uh, branching out in that uh, respect and, and doing some more stuff with them. We've got this really cool blade. I really like it, about three and a half inches. And there's two versions available, and they're both the same price at just under 200. You can get it in S35VN or their VG10 Damascus. Some may call this a drop point. I think this is, uh, personally, I'd say it's more of a modified Warncliffe with a really broad profile. And this really feels like one of those gentleman's knives that you could really put to work uh, onto some heavier tasks if you needed to. I mean, that's just gonna be an aggressive cutting blade. Got S35VN steel on this one, as I said. Nice flat grind, swedge at the back for a little bit uh, better relief along the spine, but it still carries nice and slim. Titanium frame lock, carbon fiber on the front, milled pocket clip, front flipper in this case. It's not a, uh, a rear flipper, and it works quite nicely, even though, you know, you guys know, I'm not, I'm a little clumsy at front flippers sometimes, but this one's still pretty nice for me. All right, you guys, I gotta be honest. I don't fully understand this next knife. <laughs> so you guys are gonna have to uh, maybe chime in a little bit in the comments if you know what's going on here. This is the inversion from Kaiser Cutlery in collaboration with Dirk Pinkerton. Comes in at 169 and just right off the bat, like reading out the spec sheet, it is, you know, it's a titanium frame lock flipper from one of the, uh, the premium import companies right now. So you kind of know what to expect. You've got S35 VN steel, about 3.2 inches of blade, titanium frame, frame lock, ball bearings in the pivot, lock bar insert, milled pocket clip, which is reversible in this case, which is quite nice. Um, but that's just the spec sheet. The story of this knife, uh, apparently it's primarily intended to be used in a reverse grip with the edge facing towards you, which is why it kind of looks like the handle's upside down. Because uh, normally, you know, I would try to hold this like this. That doesn't feel, uh, feel awesome with it oriented that way. Um, but that, that being said, when deploying it, it is, um, you, you do kind of get used to it. Or at least I, I can kind of make sense of uh, getting into that intended grip. You kind of flip open and have to then invert the blade or invert, invert the knife like so to get the, uh, the tactical grip that they're going for with this knife. Beyond that, there is certainly some utility built into this in addition to the offensive capabilities. You've got a slight recurve uh, with that very abruptly clipped sheep's foot profile here. So this is gonna be good for uh, you know, doing things like rope or like pallet straps, that sort of thing. Zip ties even get under there and, and kind of pull under or uh, pull through. And you've definitely got a conversation piece there. I don't know, what do you guys think of this knife? I'm actually keen to hear uh, what you guys think in the comments. This next knife is a little bit more my speed. Another from Kaiser. This is the Cobalt, which is designed by Sebastian Irowan. Specs kind of read very similarly, as you might expect. Titanium frame lock, S35 VN steel, just under three inches on this, and the price on here is uh, 149. Now, me personally, I am a big fan of knives with a uh, continuously curved edge, and you've got that here. Again, great steel to back it up. Interesting little cutout here near the tip of the blade. Doesn't really seem to me to do anything uh, super functional, although I can get my finger out there um, and, and rest it right there. Maybe that's what they were intending. And that really does let you get in and get some really precise control of the tip. But even beyond that, it just looks kind of cool, and it certainly doesn't get in the way at all. That flowing shape heads back into the handle. You've got a very organic flowing look. Carbon fiber inlay on the front. 
But what's cool about the way they've done that handle there, you can see that shape, the way it lines up with the back of the thumb cutout and that little notch there at the tip, all kind of follow the same contour, which is a pretty nice thing tying everything together. All right, one more Kaiser this week, although we do have a bunch of new Kaisers. Um, I'll try to show you a few more from our current batch next week as well. But this is the new Lieb. This is a Azo design, and this is part of their Vanguard series, which means it comes in more affordable. This one is just 55 bucks right now. You still get a ball bearing pivot, so the flipping action is quite good, but the materials and the construction otherwise is scaled back just a little bit to hit that price point. Blade is less than two and a half inches here, uh, and we've got N690 stainless steel. Again, really good shape, I think, for EDC. Kind of a drop point, but you've got, uh, depending on how you hold it, it might, be, might behave sort of like a sheep's foot. Really cool little look. There's a few different handle colors available as well. This is a liner lock. Uh, the one I have right here is the translucent G10, but we've also got uh, some black G10 as well as a brown micarta if you want something uh, a little bit more rustic feeling. But you've also got a blue pivot collar that provides a nice accent and everything's put together really nicely, at least as good, if maybe not even a little bit better than uh, some of the Civivis and stuff along a similar price range. Although of course the, uh, the size is a little bit uh, slimmer or a little bit shorter than some of those knives at a similar price. But I really like this design. Single position pocket clip. It's just got everything you need in a very compact length. All right, speaking of some of those imported knives in that $50 to $60 price range, we've got a new steel wheel. This is the Scylla. A few different color options as well, including some more uh, traditional blacks, but I pulled the blue one with the black stone washed D2 blade here. Price on this is just under 60 bucks, and if you're kind of familiar with steel wheels offerings in this price range, again, you are gonna know what to expect. I already told you about the D2 steel. You've got ball bearings in the pivot, liner lock, nicely finished G10, pocket clip, which is a uh, right side pocket clip, but they also include a left side pocket clip in the package. But what's different about this knife is, of course, the opening method here. It's a thumb stud, but it's mounted sort of, uh, you know, behind the pivot, so it's not a flipper. You can flip it open though. It doesn't, it doesn't really get in the way despite the interesting look. And what's nice about this, um, you kind of get what you get with a friction folder in that you've got a bit of that tab sticking back so that even though there's a liner lock, if something were to happen to that lock and it were to kind of disengage, your thumb's already pushing it back into the locked position. So it's even more secure than just a standard liner lock. Now the blade is about 3.4 inches or just over that. Actually kind of a similar shape to that Centauri, maybe just a little bit uh, more belly on the Scylla. But you've got that really nice uh, black and stone wash finish. Uh, of course, D2 steel is not a uh, not considered a true stainless, so you get a little bit more uh, corrosion resistance thanks to that finish that they put on there. Nice flat grind, nice acute tip, swedge out there near the tip. Just a very very usable design with an awesome blade shape. All right, last but not least, I've got two knives here that are actually kind of in and out for us. Now, as you may or may not know, we actually do take pre-orders on things that uh, have been announced but not quite released yet. This is one of those right here. This is the new uh, version of the Spyderco Para 3 with their new Spy 27 particle steel. It's a premium uh, particle steel that is exclusive, uh, developed with Spyderco themselves. So you're only going to find it on their, their knives. So we will leave a link to this in the description, but uh, I think all of this current batch we just got in is going towards filling our pre-orders. So if you've got uh, a pre-order in already, you've got your spot in line and, and hopefully uh, the, bat the first batch we got will take care of you. But I wanted to show it to you now while it was fresh, while it was new. Now it's the pair of three you know and love. You've got that three inch blade, nice finger choil there that lets you get a full grip on this shorter blade. So even though you know it is just three inches, you feel like you've got a really, um, a really good grip on it. You've got a, a nice heavier duty knife than the, uh, the blade length would suggest. It's the lightweight version, so you've got uh, their bi-directional FRN, and the color on here, they're calling it cobalt blue, and that's the color they're using on all the, uh, the Spy 27 versions of these knives, because uh, that actually has to do with the elemental makeup of the steel that they've developed, which is leaning into the element cobalt very heavily. Now, in terms of performance, these are just getting out there, so we are kind of eager to hear from you guys how this steel is performing for you in the real world. Um, I've heard some theoretical uh, articles out there kind of postulating it might be somewhere in the uh, S30 to S35 VN range. Don't know. 
you'll have to let us know once you get them out there and are able to uh, start messing around with them and, and seeing how they hold up. But it's pretty cool to see. Again, pre-order now if you want to get a spot in line. And that's the same for this knife from Benchmade. This is the 565-1 Mini Freak or the Mini Super Freak because this is the upgraded version. Uh, not identical to the full-size uh, Super Freak. They've uh, switched things up just a little bit. Uh, but this one comes in at 263.50 right now. We've got a sub three inch blade of S90V. Again, a nice versatile drop point shape here, a little bit of a thumb ramp and carbon fiber for the handle scales. Now, one of the cues they carried over from the full size Super Freak is you do get the red, uh, the red thumb studs and the red accents there in the handle, although you don't get a red liner like you do on that one. But the Mini Freak, in no matter which version you choose, whether it's this upgraded version or the standard one, is a great alternative to the, um, to the Mini Griptilian if you're looking for a slightly different blade shape. Got that axis lock, and this one feels fantastic out of the box. And you can see right there, first production run on this particular one. But yeah, there's actually a number of knives on here that work well in some of those more restrictive locales. We've got some sub three inch blades, a sub two and a half inch blade, and this one right here also hits that thing under two, under three inches. And you've got ambidextrous operation built into this knife as well, thanks to the pocket clip, which can go on either side. And of course the axis lock, which is accessible from either side of the handle. But check out that view from the top. You can see we've got a little bit of thickness to the handle scales. So it's not a super slim carry. If that's what you're going for, go for the, uh, the newly uh, available mini bug out. But this one still carries nice and easily, but you've got a little bit more girth there to get you a better grip and you know, kind of like uh, that pair of three, feel like you have a little bit bigger knife than that three inch blade would suggest. Although that pair of three definitely does have more handle if that's what your priority is. All right, everyone, thanks for sticking around with me. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at all these cool new knives. Make sure to let us know what you think of them there in the comments. And if you wanna get your hands on any of them, we will leave links in the description to take you over to thenifecenter.com. And make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from The Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.